Good morning. It's Saturday, July 16th. And today I have to rant about Donald Trump. I haven't ranted about Donald in a while. I've mentioned him a few times, but this is a specific rant dealing with him and him alone. And so Donald has become infatuated with the J6 hearings. And from what I understand, he is constantly on the television set watching what's going on, getting aggravated and grumbling to himself about what is going on in the J6 committee. And he is very upset about what the witnesses have come forth and told them. And if I was him and I was listening to this committee, I would be thinking of somewhere to go. I would want to go to some place where they don't have an extradition treaty to the United States. And guess what? Russia and China don't have extradition treaties with the United States. So if Donald Trump takes a good hard look at this thing and starts thinking like a man who wants to escape That's what he should be doing. He should not be wasting his time on watching the J6 committee. He could go and get back to Russia and maybe build a skyscraper or two with them. I mean, he loves Putin. That would be a perfect place. Maybe the U.S. could even make a swap. Trump for Griner. That would be interesting, right? You think Russia would send that basketball player back to us in exchange for getting Donald Trump? But if he doesn't want to go there, like Russia or China, he can go to Brunei. If he prefers a beach location, because, you know, he's got that place at Mar-a-Lago, if he wants to be near the beach, he can go to the Maldives or even Tunisia. They have beaches there and no extradition treaty. If he wants, and if he wants to change the people's view of him, and he wants to do something really great, he could go to the Ukraine. He could help Zelensky, because the Ukraine has no extradition treaty with the United States. Now, I would love to see Donald, Donald the warrior, Donald who avoided joining the army because he had bone spurs or something. He would be wonderful if he went and worked with Zelensky and helped out in the Ukraine, you know, giving his knowledge to the troops there. Wouldn't that be something if he decided to go there? Maybe if he went there, we wouldn't be pressing for him to come back and face the music. So I leave you with that thought right now, but I have other things. So I ask you, why? Why is he doing these things and watching the committee so closely? And then I realize he's listening to what people are saying. And then he gets the brilliant idea that he's going to call up one of these witnesses and tell the witness not to worry, just do the right thing and everything will turn out fine. But doesn't he realize that by talking to these witnesses, he opens himself up to witness tampering? And witness tampering is a crime. So does he expect not to be prosecuted if he calls and talks to witnesses? He would be better spending his time, as I say, getting some place where he could be extradition safe. Instead, he tried to call a witness, and the witness was smart enough not to talk to him. The witness told his lawyer that Donald had tried to talk to him, had tried to call. I don't think he even answered the phone. But somehow or other, he knew that was Donald on the line, and he told his attorney all about it. And, of course, the attorney told the committee. So now the committee has got this piece of evidence that they can throw into the mix of everything else that they're gathering about him. So what is he wasting his time for? He should be planning his escape. Now, this witness that Donald tried to call is not a big shot. He's just somebody that worked in the White House, a member of the White House staff. Someone at the same level, I believe, as as Cassidy Hutchinson. So this was not a very, very important person in the scheme of things. He wasn't a high-ranking official. He was an ordinary White House staffer, or she. I don't know if it was a he or she. But the committee turned all this information over to the Department of Justice.
And Liz Cheney said, We will take any effort to influence witness testimony very seriously. So she's prepared to go the limit on this particular event. Now, no one in Trump's circle has responded to any questions that the committee has asked with respect to this particular incident. Now, the committee has spoken to this person, but it's not part of the person's deposition at this moment. But as you know, the committee cannot prosecute a crime. So Benny Thompson said, in this situation, we gave this thing right to the Department of Justice, and they can take care of it. Now, the committee has been on alert for witness tampering because Cassidy Hutchinson had messages sent to her. So this has been going on, but it hasn't come to light like this. It's clear that the messages that were sent to Hutchinson were meant to alter or affect her testimony. Cheney then told the story that a witness received a call in which somebody said, There's a person that you know who knows you're going to have a deposition tomorrow, and he wants me to let you know that he's thinking about you. He knows you're loyal and you're going to do the right thing when you go in for your deposition. Now, who would talk to somebody like that? Just think about somebody getting somebody to make that phone call. Who would do that? Nobody in their right mind. So that leads me to the belief that Donald should do the right thing and he should start deciding which country he is going to race off to in order to avoid being locked up. So I leave you with that today. The story of a man who is absolutely out of control, who doesn't know he really has very little power right now, except in the minds of millions of his minions. And I hope he takes my advice and moves to another country. So I leave you with that this morning. Have a great day. Bye.